From the Burger Varsity Football House here on the campus of Lafayette College, it is Signing Day Central. Welcome everybody, I'm Mike Joseph, color analyst for Lafayette Sports Network and GoLeopards.com. And this is one of the most exciting days we have here on campus. That first Wednesday in February is so exciting and I am joined by head football coach John Troxel. John, it's got to be an exciting day, exciting week, and you and your staff got to be a little exhausted as well. How are things going? Things are going great. You know, I mean, it is it's exciting because we're adding a new group. Uh, this is our first full group that we get to do as a, as a staff, and, uh, and the guys worked really hard. I mean, uh, you know, from, from recruiting the guys that we have that were on our campus, some of the fifth-year guys, to bringing in a new group, so, uh, you know, to improve our team and, and get us back to being a championship caliber. Well, much different than last year when you were kind of thrown in the middle. You did retain some of the kids you had um, in that group, which was great, but this was the first opportunity for you and your staff to go out and really obviously cultivate those kids, get them into camp, and that was much of a difference, wasn't it? It was, and you get to build those relationships with the families. Parents get to trust you a little bit more, and the kids get to see us not just as, as coaches, but as people too, so uh, that's really important in the process. Absolutely, so uh, before we get into these kids, and we're gonna have a great group of kids uh, right now, and we're gonna take a look at a bunch of kids on offense, a bunch of kids on defense, some of the targeting areas you looked at, but let's take a look back to the 2022 season. Obviously, your first uh, time here on College Hill coaching um, from a head coaching standpoint, um, some good, some bad, bookended by two great wins, Sacred Heart in the beginning, Lehigh at the end. What are some of your thoughts about the 2022 season? Yeah, I mean, I think it was evident that we played really good defense. Uh, we have to improve on, on special teams in our kick game to help us. Yep. Uh, field position is always critical. I thought we did a good job offensively not turning the ball over, mm -hmm. but we have to get better up front, be physical, be able to run the ball better. Uh, you know, and protect our quarterback a lot better. Yeah, so th those are areas. Yeah, some of those things that we could see basically from the sideline, you could tell. And some of the areas you struggled on, the defense was terrific, kept you in a lot of ball games. Uh, but the offense did seem to, to pick their, themselves up. And obviously, Sean came in, played really well. Um, but up front, you need to get better. So again, yes. that takes us, probably segues us into targeting. Was there any areas that you and your staff sat down after the season and said, listen, we need to get better here, here, and here. Obviously special teams, but what are some of the other areas you may have targeted coming into this recruiting season? Yeah, so we needed to improve in the offensive line. I mean, yeah. uh, first we had guys that got injured, so we didn't have our full group last year anyway. Right. Um, but, but our offensive line, uh, and we just had to increase, you know, our, our team speed overall, you know. So we focused on uh, out on the perimeter getting some speed in, yep. uh, especially even in the backfield. And then on the defensive side, getting some length up front. And, you know, we're going to lose some guys in that defensive line yes. that was pretty good. Uh, so those were critical areas for us, you know, and obviously trying to bring in uh, a couple of kickers who can help uh, kicker punter. They, they can help compete and make us a little bit better in those areas as well. Right. What, what is the biggest difference between the early signing day and obviously today? You got a bunch of kids you had in December. Yeah. You announced a bunch of kids. <clears throat> that's only been recent in the last couple of years. Has that had an impact, being able to get those kids off the board in December? It is, and, and you know, I think it's critical, especially in the first, in the first signing day, right. when you look, you know, you're looking at, at getting local kids, uh, when I say local, in the, in, you know, from Maryland to Connecticut, you know, sure. New Jersey, Pennsylvania kids, which is, which is really critical because everybody's recruiting those areas. Right. Then it gives you a chance to really focus on some of the, some of the areas you didn't hit on, you know, what, what positions you didn't get and going out nationally and trying to find right. some guys to bring in and fill those areas as well. So uh, it does help and you don't have to sit there and babysit kids until the February signing date yeah, as well. And, and the Patriot League is different now. When I was here, it was Coach Rousseau had said, hey, 300 mile radius, that's it. We don't go outside of that. But that's not the case anymore. And even when you were here with Coach Devani in the mid 2000s, uh, you guys reached out to yeah. different areas, although that that radius is extremely important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to control, you know, within three hours. But there's some great players you're gonna you're gonna get to talk about here yeah, in a little absolutely. bit with me, and uh, that are coming from you know Texas or Louisiana, you know, <laughs> North Carolina, and uh, and it's great for the school as well. So uh, to expand our brand and our footprint. Well, you guys have done a phenomenal job, and just to see the the foundation, and you said like laying those building blocks and the foundation you've laid. Um, to get those kids interested, and, and this list of kids is phenomenal. Um, you know, a lot of kids offensively, a lot of kids defensively, and uh, um, we're going to get right into it. Let's talk about these kids. Let's, let's get right to it. Let's talk about um, about 13 or 14 kids offensively, 10 or 11 kids defensively. You're going to have some more after that probably that you're going to add. Um, but uh, we're going to take a look at the offense first. Sure. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with wide receiver Ben uh, Boussier out of St. Thomas Aquinas, right down the road here in Manalapan, only within probably an hour, hour and 15 minutes. 
Uh, tell me a little bit about him. I, I have him as possibly an economics major. He's a four-year letter winner. He's a great athlete. He's a guy that's got length. He's a guy that can stretch you on the perimeter. Yeah, and, and we, had, we had a chance to have Ben at camp this year. And, uh, you know, Ben's got incredible hand-eye, uh, runs great routes, makes incredible plays down the field. And we're really excited about him. He, um, you know, uh, he, he transferred into St. Thomas Aquinas because he wanted to have that ability to play against some better competition so that he could get noticed. And, uh, and he just did a great job for them. Yeah, he's got great acceleration. He's got bursts. He's got good 50-50 balls. All the things that I'm, you know, some of the notes that I take, I think he's going to be a red zone threat with some of that height that he has. Um, and he also, he just, there's certain things about wideouts. How quickly do they eat up cushion? And you and I as DBs remember that. Oh, this yeah. kid kind of eats up cushion as he comes off the line of scrimmage. He gets into you quickly, into your space, and then he's got quick feet at that point. Yeah, and you notice, I mean, he, he, can, he gets off the ball, he can release. Uh, you know, people don't get hands on him very easily. And uh, again, you know, he's, he's, he's a really good uh, college receiver prospect, you know. Right. So we're looking forward to working with him and, uh, and hoping he can come in and make an impact in our program. Yeah, and you need wide receivers, obviously. We're going to lose a couple. We've got a couple yeah. kids that are, are taking off. But, you know, spring ball is an issue. You and I yeah. talked about that a little bit. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, down to, we're down to five receivers in the program. So right. it was critical that we brought in a good group of wide receivers. And sure. we'll talk about a couple more of them. But, uh, but Ben's a big part of that group. Okay, let's bump on to, to some areas where, again, you were targeting the offensive line. Okay, we got two yeah. nice offensive linemen. Let's talk about one of these two twin brothers, yeah. Michael Dincher. Out of, state, uh, out of state college, this team went a long way. This kid is a road grader. He's the type of kid you can plug and play, I think. Yeah, we, we're going to expect big things of him. You know, he, he had some FBS offers. Uh, he's a real physical kid. I think in his career he had 320-some pancakes. <laughs> uh, he's got, he plays with great pad level, comes off the ball. Yes. And, you know, and, and, and we need to get uh, more physical up front, which I think we will, and he brings some of that toughness and physicalness to the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're very fortunate because some of the guys that were hurt last year, John Olmstead's coming back, Bo Bedard's coming back, right. Gus Salopec will be back, uh, guys that we missed, and, uh, you know, and, and they'll be great mentors for, uh, for Michael. Yeah, three-time selection to the PA Football News Coaches Report All-Star, played at a high level of football 6A, uh, State College, his high school advanced to the semifinals, 21 and 22. So he and his brother took them there. Um, and again, having a good offensive line, you, you just can't say enough. He just looks to me like a solid Patriot League offensive lineman wherever you plug him in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, uh, and he'll compete early and, and uh, again, add depth to that room and, and give us some depth across the board. You know, last year we really only had one deep once guys got hurt. True, yep. And this year we'll have, uh, we feel, a two-deep group that will be productive. He, he brings a little nasty to it, which yeah, he, I like. He you know, does. He finishes blocks, you he know does. what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, and the pancake thing you brought up. I had 132 this year. You said over 300 in his career. But to finish blocks and that type of thing, that's what you're looking to guys play not only to the whistle but through the whistle. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Physicality. So let's talk about his brother. I mean, almost a, a replica. Thomas, the same type of thing, a road grader kind of kid, a kid that can get downhill, can actually get to the second level, which you're looking at, and that's not every Patriot League O lineman can't actually get to the second level and be athletic, but both these kids can. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the other thing, too, is, is they, they're football players. They love football. You know, we always talk about in recruiting getting kids that – they just love the sport. You know, I mean, they're already in the weight room. They're already looking forward to camp. You know, it's, it's just it's a part of their life. And, you know, they're coming from State College, which, is, again, is a great program. Yep. Uh, that football is really important. So we couldn't be happier with getting these two in our program. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to be – and they were ones that committed to you back in December. Yes. So it was early. So it was a good, solid commitment. They were happy. And, again, to have, like you said, within the three-hour radius, their parents are going to be able to come here. The family's going to be here every weekend. This is just a great group of, uh, of kids, and it's a great place to start when you work your way from the center out. you got Mike Barr probably at center, but you work your way yep. out, and you get some of those guys healthy. This is going to be – you always have to have 16 or 17 guys in that offensive line room, and, and that's – the depth there is so important. Right, and, we're, and that's what we're trying to get to, 16 guys in a room. Last year we only had – 11 by yeah, the time we got hurt. It's not enough. It is not enough. So, so we're really excited about that. Yeah, great. And again, the offensive linemen, um, you know, Michael and Thomas Dincher coming out of State College. Um, skill kits. Let's talk about some uh, running back right here. Uh, Kente, am I saying that right? Yep. Kente Adams, or Edwards, Edwards excuse Kente, me, out of North 115, 20 minutes away right here. This kid had a bunch of offers. He looked at Lafayette. He liked, the obviously, the ability to stay home. But he's a home run hitter, John. 
He is. He's got great speed. He was the second fastest kid in the state a year ago, running yeah. a 10 6 5 in 100 meters. Uh, he committed to Navy and then decommitted to come here. Um, and we're really excited. I had a chance to see him live. Uh, Coach Roder and I went over, saw him against Phillipsburg, and they, okay. they, they couldn't tackle me. I had like 14 carries for 230-some yards, oh and it really sold us on, on his uh, toughness and his ability to, to break yeah. tackles. So he's got great lower half strength and, uh, and incredible speed. He runs really nice, and, and when, I, when I was in high school, he, my brother was a running back, and he used to talk about running from the hash to the numbers to the sideline. He has that feel, can cut back, has the jump cuts, has the ability to break tackles, always looking for yards after contact. Never, the first guy never brings him down. Okay, he's always got his eye on the second guy, the second tackler, and then he has the explosiveness you can see here to get into the second level. So again, um, that first tackler never successful, and you said he was one of the, the, the fastest guys in New Jersey. Yeah, and, uh, and it's another kid that we get to keep home uh, local kid and and, uh, and a great kid. I mean, he's just right. he's a tremendous person. And uh, again, coming from North Hunter, and uh, yeah. we couldn't be happier. Yeah, he, I always talk about running backs being quick through the hole and not to the hole. You know, what I mean, it's where they're patient, but then they have yeah. that speed and that burst. And he seems to have that, you know, that zero to sixty speed. And to keep a kid that close to home, I mean, that's that's incredible. So yeah. uh, if he gets to the second level, he's probably yeah. going to be gone. He's going to be gone, which yeah. is, is exactly what we're looking for. And you already have a good stable of running backs there. So there's going to be, again, that competition, competition. within that room. And uh, he's a kid that brings a, a lot of talent. Yes, a lot of talent, a lot of speed. OK, so let's talk about now again, going back to the offensive line. I want to talk about an offensive lineman that you got in a transfer. OK, Tom Grippo. This kid was a, not, not a local kid, but from Jersey. Yep. OK, Seton Hall prep. Um, he's a kid that came out of, was that went to Wake Forest, didn't work out for him there. He's got a couple years of eligibility. What'd you like about Thomas and why'd you bring him? You know what? I mean, first, uh, you know, it was what the Wake Forest coaches said. You know, obviously, yeah. you know, Dave Cohen. Sure. I've known Dave for years, <laughs> uh, but spoke of him first as a person. Uh, but okay. again, he, he's, he's a developed kid. He, he's strong uh, and, he's, and he's got playing experience. So he's, he played four games last year and the year before. Right. So he's got some, some FBS experience and we would just really think the world of him as, in terms of he's a football player. He loves the sport yeah. and, he, you know, uh, and he's coming from a great school where when you get a transfer, you know, the, the curriculum has to transfer as well. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, so that all helps. So there were a lot of things that, that played in our favor, but uh, you know, he had some other offers at the FCS level uh, and we were fortunate enough that he wanted to be closer to home, and, uh, yeah. and he's going to help us. He's absolutely going to help you. Again, can get, you could probably plug in and compete right away. He's got great hand placement. I always talk about hand placement with offensive linemen, guys that don't grab, guys that don't lean, guys that don't reach, guys that can be patient, keep their hands in, their thumbs up, their elbows in. I mean, he's the type of kid, good hand placement, good drive, has a feel for maybe reaching a guy, getting to the second yeah. level. Those are so important at this level with the athletic ability of the defensive linemen, and I think D-line in this league has gotten so much better. The kids from Holy Cross here at Lafayette, the best in the league, Colgate. You know, all those kids can rush the passer and then can disengage and get off blocks. And as an offensive lineman, you have to be strong at the point of attack, and you still have to be athletic. Yeah, and he's athletic, and we're going to start yeah. him at tackle because he can get out in space a little okay, bit. Okay, that was on. my next question. Yeah. Where are you going to play him? Yeah, so we're going to start him at right tackle and, and get him out in space. And, uh, okay. you know, especially with some of the things that we're doing in the screen game out there, yep. he's going to make us so much better at that. So we're really excited about him. And you have a couple kids coming back, obviously, that are getting back from injury. Um, so he's going to add to that room. And I, I was wondering if you're going to play him at guard or you're going to play him at tackle. And then you just talked about Coach Cohen, who you and I know real well, Coach Claus and all those yeah. guys down there. He comes with a great pedigree and he comes with a great reputation. Yeah, and a great understanding of what it's going to take to be successful, right. which, which is really important. So right, we're, right. we're thrilled to have him. Exactly. And another kid that's not even more than an hour and 15, 20 minutes away. Yeah, and the good part is, is we get him for this spring. So we get to coach him and Excellent. get him ready for next year because he's already on campus. Absolutely terrific. Great, great job. Let's talk about Addison Hoffman, and a monster offensive lineman, six foot seven. 260 pounds out of Boca Raton, Florida, the Taft School. I tell you what, not, not a lot not to like about uh, Addison. No, we talk all the time about being physical, coming off the ball, putting people on the ground. Uh, you know, Addison plays with an edge, uh, which we really like, and he's really athletic. You know, it's tough to find those guys uh, who play wow. with that edge out at tackle and have that athleticism, but he would be a natural tackle for us, uh, can get out in space and run, you know, in the screen game, and again, uh, has that length you know, that you want as a, as a pass rusher, you know, yeah. so uh, to, so he can stop the pass rusher, not as a pass rusher, but, yeah. uh, but again, uh, finishes blocks and, and is a really violent kid. So we, uh, we really like Addison a lot. 
Yeah, and out of the Taft School in Connecticut, but he's from Florida, so he's used to being away from home, not too far. Um, big kid. I mean, he looks to me like he could even play tight end. I mean, he's got good hand placement. And when you're that big, it's hard to get underneath guys. You know what I'm saying? And get the good yeah. hand placement. And he's learned to do that. I like Addison. I like the way he moves. Yeah, he moves well out in space. And, you know, I think there's a clip on here where he gets, you know, you see him run here down the field. And, you know, he, I mean, he's yep. got great athleticism and speed. And, yeah. Uh, for a guy his size, wow. he, he runs really, really well. And, uh, <laughs> exactly. Again, could uh, be a great addition to our program. Not often a six foot seven kids get to run 40 yards down the field, but seeing that clip, that's an important clip to have on there because out in space and still gets his hand on the defensive back, springs him for a touchdown. I love Addison, six foot yeah, seven. Um, he could be a, a guy that can come in here and compete. Probably needs to fill in a little bit. Yeah, get himself gotta up gain, to, yeah, yeah, gain a little bit of weight, sure. gain a little bit of strength. But uh, you know, once we develop him, he's going to be a really good yeah. football player. And offensive line is so tough here because you know you don't get that redshirt year here at Lafayette. You don't get it mostly in the Patriot League, except a couple schools. But to develop offensive linemen, they need that extra year. Where a DB, a wideout can come in, show their skills right away, a running back, but. Offensive line is a little bit different story. Yeah, it's challenging because yes. because they're you know they're not used to the scheme right. and they're not used to the size and strength and speed of the exactly. game and the movement. So yep. yeah, so we'll develop them and he'll be a good football player. Okay, so we talked about Ben Boussier, wide receiver. Let's talk about another wide receiver that you're excited about. Let's talk about Avery Jones out of Baltimore, Maryland, Mount St. Joseph's High School. Yeah, I can see the smile on your face. This kid can play, uh, tracks the ball extremely well. I love Avery. You tell me about him. Yeah, uh, the, well, the first thing you're going to love about wow. him is he runs a 10-8 in the 100, so he's got incredible speed, which we needed on the perimeter. Right. He does. He tracks the ball well. He's got really good length, you know, as a six-footer and yep. long arms and, uh, you know, just really coming out of the, uh, I guess they're in the MIA down there. Yep. and just in Maryland, uh, yeah. You know, one of the better players down there. So we were we were thrilled that we were able to get get in on him and, and convince him to come here and play for us. Great straight line speed. I love about him. I love the fact that some of the 50-50 balls seem more like 80-20 for guys. That's this type of kid. I mean, he's an 80-20 kind of kid. And I, what I like too is that I saw him against press coverage, and we had struggled a little bit against press coverage yeah. last year. He can get off the press coverage and separate. Yes, and that's that's what makes him special. Is you know he can he can threaten you wow, down the that. field. Uh, he goes and gets it and just again, just really a good find and, and you know, credit to our staff, you know, the guys uh, evaluating kids and, and getting a player like this. Good. How, how good is the football at Mount St. Joe's? I'm not familiar with that. Is it's, that it's pretty re- good football? It's really good football, okay. yeah. And, that, and that's part of it, you know, when you start talking about the kids that we're getting. Yeah. We also wanted to get kids from great programs right. who have already competed at a high level mm-hmm. so that when they get here, you yeah. know, they're, they're ready to play. And, yeah, they're and not they, shell-shocked. They yeah. understand that. And I've noticed that a lot of the kids you have, you're getting are kids that have come from those type of programs, the 6A, the 5A. And when you get to Texas, I don't even know how many A's they have. But you're yeah. getting those kids from that level, and they've seen that type of competition, and they're not surprised when they get here. Correct. And they're not afraid yeah. to work. Exactly. You know, so. Yeah, good program. So good really program. excited about Avery. He's, yeah, he can play. So one. we got Ben, we got Avery. We're going to fill in that room. Yep. Um, I just love, I love what Avery does. Um, from that standpoint, let's talk about the quarterbacks. Okay, obviously yeah. we had some guys get hurt last year. We want to add a kid here. We're going to add a kid from uh, Forest City, North Carolina, Christ School, Trey Mooney. Yep. I I love the way Trey looks in the pocket. I just love the way he slides. The pa- look at the patience. Tell me what you liked about Trey. So he's got great athleticism. He's got really good arm strength. Yes. Uh, he's got a, that kind of that flick of the wrist that that makes you. Uh, really like the way he gets the ball out of the hand quickly. He uh, came to camp as well, mm-hmm. and, uh, and you get a chance to see his athleticism hurdle on yeah. somebody there. <laughs> but we were fortunate too. We also had a little bit of inside intel, you know. So he he played for Chad Walker. Chad was a tight sure. end here and, a, and a great end. player. So Chad was his head coach there, who raved about him, uh, you know. And he got hurt his junior year. Didn't he? Only played in a couple games, yeah, that's rough. Yeah. and uh, so that really uh, limited his recruiting. I think. Uh, just being hurt so we were fortunate enough to get on him early he's another kid he enrolled here mid-year so he's on campus so we're going to get to watch him this spring so we're really excited about that 4,700 yards 41 TDs he also carried the ball for over 800 yards and 11 touchdowns so he shows you that escapability he has the ability to extend plays not afraid to run but what I like I know he's not afraid to run but he keeps his eyes downfield with two hands on the football when he's driving the pocket and I always talk about driving the pocket, step up in the pocket. So many young kids in high school can escape 
vert, uh, horizontally. But when you can drive the pocket and keep your eyes down the field, you have the ability to run, threaten that linebacker, that mic or whatever, and then you can still deliver the ball. That's what Trey does. Yeah, and he's got a great football IQ. I mean, yeah. he understands the game. And, he, and again, he's another kid who loves it. I mean, we've had a chance to have him here already. He spends more time than anybody who's out there throwing already. He yeah. just, he just, it's what he wants to do, and he just loves it. So we're just ecstatic to have him. We'll talk about a kid that's a little bit more local here, probably an hour, an hour and 15 minutes away down in Souderton, Sean Purvey. I love Sean Purvey. I love the way he eats up ground. He reminds me of a guy that was a couple of years after you, uh, Phil Yarborough. Tell me about Sean, what you liked about him. Yeah, again, another guy with length and speed. You know, he is another camp kid who just competed like nobody yeah. else, and it really sold us on him. Uh, his, his shuttle time was like a, a 4 one, six <laughs> or something. So for a kid that's long, he actually has yeah. great twitch and great speed. Uh, and again, it really came down to two. I mean, uh, the person that he was. I mean, he's just a really, really good kid, really smart, uh, loves the game of football. And, you know, Coach Gallagher couldn't say enough good things about him, and, and we were sold right from the get-go. Yep, Suburban won first-team all-selection not only as a wide receiver, but also as a defensive back. Yeah. So he was, he's a good athlete all around, over to almost 1,200 yards, all-purpose yards. He's a point guard on the basketball team. So, like you said, that 4-1 shuttle time, converts himself into a guy that kind of make you miss in a phone booth, but then still can stretch you out. Yeah, and he'll, he'll be just a, he'll be a playmaker for us. And again, you can see him here. You yeah, know, I, mean, that, once he I love the, the way he knows space. where he is on the field, right? Yeah, and he, he makes people miss and, uh, and he's tough. And so, you know, part of our, our uh, receiving core, you know, they got to be tough and be able to block and he can do it all. So, uh, you know, again, another relatively local kid that we yep. get to keep home. Six foot, 165, adds again. Another wide receiver in that group, so there's going to be a lot of competition there. Um, Souderton, good football down there as well, going to be local. You're going to have a full stadium here, Coach. I mean, all these local guys. I hope gonna, so. We're going to sell it out and have a lot of you're fun. You're going to sell it out, and Sean's the type of kid that can do that. I just love his athletic ability. You know, guys that are difference makers on the outside, they're the guys that can make plays on third down and seven. Yeah, and he's, yeah. he's that guy. He's, yep. he's, he's an outside guy. And, and, but he's also one that I think you can motion and move around and get right. him matched up on linebackers, and, yeah. uh, and he'll make a big impact. And do that type of stuff. Has a great feel in the pocket as well. Again, let's talk about another local guy. Another, and I'm wondering where you're going to play it. It says offensive line, but Sean Wilson is six foot five, 260 pounds. He's from Easton, your rival high school. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, but this kid is a, was a phenomenal lacrosse player. I mean, this kid's a terrific athlete. I did probably 15 of his games in high school. I love Sean. What do you like about Sean? Uh, he's, he's tough. Uh, you know, he's an Easton kid and, uh, and he's great out wow. of space. I mean, he's a really physical kid. You know, I mean, he, again, you said it. I mean, he, he played defensive line in the East Penn. He played offensive yep. line. He was one of the best on both sides of the line of scrimmage. You know, we saw even some of his clips when he went to some Look camps. Him pulling here. Wow. Yeah. Saw him in some clips where he was playing some tight end, but, <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to put him at tackle and, and, and get him out in space again. Yeah. And, his athleticism for what we do is going to be just outstanding and we're expecting yep. big things and as you said it was my high school rival but yeah. uh, he'll let me know about it all the time <laughs> so uh, but no just a, a great kid and again someone that we worked really hard to keep home and yeah. and uh, and want him to be here and hopefully he'll be blocking for his running back Najee Adams who came from there as well yeah yeah, yeah that's, he's, that's uh, the hope and uh you know, again, anytime you can get good football players from the Lehigh Valley or surrounding area yeah. to stay here, it's just good for our program, our right. school. And, and, uh, and again, we're getting some of the best, which yeah, is even absolutely. better. Absolutely. And Coach Russo said to me, always when we recruit a kid locally, we got to get the best ones. Yeah. Because the worst thing you can do is bring a kid in and all of a sudden you have a problem because, you know, the kid's not. But the, you got to bring in a kid in that's going to compete and be that type of community kid and that feel type of kid. And Sean, again, so athletic, lacrosse player, can move on his feet, great footwork, great hand placement. Uh, again, I think, he, I think he long snapped as well, right? He did, yeah. He's a long and He snapper. might be able to do some of that for us too. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah and, and again, just again, I think the understanding of what football is, you know, Easton's program, the, the tradition, the history, yeah. you know, helping uh, when you get in here, you're not shocked by no. working hard and getting in the weight room. And so, He'll, he'll be a great addition as well. That's a great get. So offensive line, wide receivers, running backs. Obviously, we threw a qu uh, two quarterbacks in there as well. Let's talk about another running back who really intrigues me. Let's talk about Ethan Weber out of Bedford. Yeah. Okay. Ethan, let's just watch Ethan. You tell me what you like. I have him at six foot 195. He plays a lot bigger than that. Yeah, he's put together now. I mean, you, you, he's a weight-trained kid. He's a big physical kid. <laughs> I mean, he averaged 
nine and a half yards per carry. <laughs> nine uh, and a half. Yeah, and just, um, you know, the, the last guy we got out of Bedford was Mike Marshall yep. back in the day. In the day. Uh, <laughs> Dean Kravosky a Bedford guy uh, yep. on campus. But, uh, but Ethan is, he's got good speed, he's tough, and he can run around you, through you. Um, just really, we were excited when, yep. when we had a chance to recruit him. And, you know, I think some of what happened for that. Ethan was is that, uh, you know, he comes from a place in Pennsylvania, rural Pennsylvania, that probably isn't recruited as heavily as some right. other places. And, and uh, again, you know, staff doing a good job of evaluating and finding them and, and uh, convincing them to come out here and look. Yeah, so. and when you're on, I mean, when you're going to Pittsburgh, which I recruited for a long time, Bedford's kind of on the way. It's not yep. like his place that you stop because it's one place to stop. You're not going to hit seven high schools in that yeah. area. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but a, a great football player. He's got just a toughness and a strength. He's got rec he hold he's a four sport athlete. Yep. He holds records in the hundred, the two hundred, the four hundred, four by one. I mean, the kid has got deceiving speed. Yep. Reminds me of some of the old Patriot League guys like a Nate Eaches or a Kiki Elias, who you're yeah, really familiar yeah. with. That's who he reminds you. I think he's going to surprise you running the football. Yeah, we're, yeah. I mean, I think so, too. And he dominated where he was. So right. it wasn't like right. he just made some plays, but he was, he was the best player on the field for, for the whole season right. against all of his competition, which, which makes us think that he can do the same here for us. That's great. And that brings us to the end of the offense. What a great bunch of kids. I tell you what, you add those into this locker room where we're sitting right now, it's going to be a phenomenal uh, situation. And some of them are already here. So um, we took a look at about 14 kids there offensively. We're going to take a short break. John Troxell and I will be back. We'll talk about some defensive players, our side of the football, or at least my side of the football. I love defense. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with the recruits for uh, defensive side of the football. Lafayette College has nearly 30,000 alumni. That's a lot of spots on our collective leopard. Each of those spots is like a doorway to new connections and opportunities. Gateway Link helps get those spots together. Gateway Link is the exclusive career network to the Lafayette family. It is the place for alumni to alumni and alumni to student networking and mentoring. Tap into the power of the Lafayette network. Join Gateway Link today. Welcome back to the Burger Varsity Football House here on the campus of Lafayette College. We are in the beautiful locker room here uh, of the football team, and we're so excited. We just covered the offensive players for uh, the first half hour. We're going to get into the defensive players, but I do want to throw up a quick picture, and I hope they have this in the studio. This is an old picture, <laughs> Coach Trox. This is our pregame on the Friday before Army at Mikey Stadium. Yep. Who's that guy on that top left up there? Yeah, he's got a lot of <laughs> That's hair. Coach I lost Tro some of my hair. <laughs> That's Coach Trox. So what a secondary we had, Coach. There's me. Obviously, I had hair, too, back then. Uh, this is a, 1993, Coach. What a great group. JoJo Herndon, yep. Mark Reardon, Matt Cope, uh, Kevin wow. Conaboy, uh, <laughs> Chrissy Chris Everett, Everett, Taji Chapman. Chapman. Yeah. Remember oh, Taji? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, I sure do. So what yep. a great group of guys. And uh, you know, that's what made Kevin playing here Conaboy. special. Yep. I tell you what, we had a good time. We had those Fridays in the afternoon, and uh, there's Mark Reardon, who's a big-time football coach as well, yep. um, and uh, you know, very associated with Charlie Roman, that big yeah. connection, that big network that we have. But I threw that, I had that picture on my desk at home, and I said, you know what, I'm going to send it in 
That's take a look cool. at it. <laughs> pretty cool. <laughs> Brings back hey, some Mark memories. Mark won a national championship at Villanova. How about it? I tell you so. what, phenomenal coach. And then went back to his high school and stuff. And Coach, I, I hate to say it, but that that's 30 years ago, that picture right there. <laughs> but that's some good stuff. That Absolutely. brings back the memories. That brings back the connection and everything. So let's move into the defense right now. And uh, you got a defense that was tops in the league. You stopped the run. You stopped the pass. You got to the passer. We finished the Lehigh game with sacks. You had Malik Cam playing in the NFL PA game just the other day. Uh, a defense that you were proud of and it kept you in a lot of games this year. Yeah, I mean, they played fast. They played physical. Yep. Uh, even if we weren't real big up front, I mean, Coach Saint did a good job of moving those yes. guys and then getting pressure. And uh, man, they were, they just they carried us all year, and uh, yeah. and we need to do that. I mean, if we're going to win championships here, you always start with defense, and yep. and we're going to continue to build. And, and the kids that are coming in, you know, they have to fit that mold. And uh, and we did a really good job. I think the staff did a really good job of finding kids in this group uh, that fit what we're looking for. That they're okay. a fit here, you know. And it's not easy to get through. Uh, to get an offer here, you know, so I mean, you got to go through your, you know, your recruiting coach, your position coach, yep. the coordinator, then the entire staff. And so we all have to agree. And we came across kids that we really liked, but if we weren't sold unanimously, right. we didn't take them. So right. the, the guys in this group are, are going to fit the mold of what we're looking for. So it was a total question. team effort in that, in that, in that room as well. And I think defensively, so one of, I think the hardest position to recruit is defensive line. Uh, that, in my opinion, would you agree with that? Yeah, you know what, especially at this level, because you're looking for size and athleticism, and if kids right. have that size and athleticism, sometimes you're going to bigger places. Sure. But uh, we got on some kids early and, and got them here, and they love the place. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then there were some kids that we got on late, and, uh, you know, yep. a couple of Texas guys who, who, who signed today, and uh, we're really excited about them too. That's fantastic. And, you, and like in baseball, they always talk about strong up the middle. You yeah. got to be strong at nose. You got to be strong at your three tech. You got to have Marco in the middle. And then obviously the safeties as well, where we were strong last year. We were strong coming off the edge. So we got to build some from the inside out. So let's talk about a defensive back right now, Alexander Kaba. Alexander's, again, not far away. T neck, New Jersey, 6'1, 185. is going to major in engineering, two time super conference honoree, three time starter. Tell me a little bit about Alex. Yeah, uh, we were fortunate enough to get Alex. You know, Alex uh, had a PWO to Stanford. Uh, you know, and, and chose to come to, to Lafayette. Uh, he brings great speed uh, for the position and great length. Wow, he close. was, uh, he's a track kid. He's a, he's a 10, 800 kid as well. Yep. You know, he runs the, you know, the 60 and the indoor. And uh, again, you can't replace speed and length, especially on the back end. And filling in for, uh, you know, we're going to lose to Ron Gilbert. Yep. Uh, finding a kid who can learn from Sekou White and, wow. and Ryan Brown. But uh, really a physical kid and, uh, and can run extremely well, which is what we need. Yeah, great straight line speed. Like you said, that length on the outside, a kid that, kid that can turn, find the football, and then obviously break passes up. 10-8 and 100, 22-6 in the 200. Like I said, a, a just 175 career tackles would tell you he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Um, Alex is a guy you can, he's going to build on it, the length he's going to learn. Um, he's going to be a bigger corner for you as well, six foot, six foot one corner. Yeah, and he and he's also yeah he's also a kid that can cover, you know, and that's right. that's one of the things with his length and look at him running down here. Yeah, being able to transition, yeah. uh, you know. But again, really good tackler, a physical kid that can cover, and, and uh, that's what we're looking for on the back end. And Teaneck, New Jersey, again, not too far away, hour and a half away, and he's going to get a chance to come down here and play and have his whole family here and. Uh, um, I like him. I yeah. always, I always, when I watch defensive backs, I'm, I'm always more critical yep. of them, as I'm sure you are, because we played yeah. the position. Um, but Alex seems to fit right in. He does. He does. Yep. And again, his physicalness is uh, is a big part of it. Yeah, exactly. Let's move to the D line. Again, we talked a little bit about the D line. We got some guys we're going to have to replace inside. Be strong from the inside out. Let's talk about Amir Crawley out of the Gilman School yeah. in Windsor. I see the smile on your face already. Six foot, one eighty five, probably bigger than that. A two time All uh, First Team selection in the Culver Memorial Football Award winner. He's explosive, coach, and his get off is insane. His get off is incredible. incredible. Yeah, we had him down at the Villanova camp. Then we had him here at camp, and we offered him right away at our camp. <laughs> uh, just you know, he we we just had him up. He weighed in at three oh five. Nice. Uh, and again, a kid who can eat up space in the middle, uh, be that run stopper that we need. And you yep. see that in the NFL all the time and at major college football. If you have a guy that can can make penetration and stop the run before it even starts, yep. uh, you're going to do pretty well. So he's a physical kid, and like I said, for a kid that big. Uh, to be able to Watch have, run have that kind of get off is is incredible. So uh, we're excited about having uh, the big man in the middle. <laughs> so 
And again, another great kid, comes from a great school, the Gilman yep. School, Gilman School. Uh, and has done very well there and will thrive here academically. And uh, we're just thrilled that he, he wants to be here with us. Yeah, he does a great job. Like you said, not just to get off, but he locks people out. He can disengage and get off the blocks, you know, pretty violently. Yep. Uh, and then he tracks the ball down the line of scrimmage. He can get down the line, keep his shoulders square. I love him. He's a pure three or a nose. Yes. Pure. I yeah. mean, that's and with, and with the loss of Ian Grayson, he yep. kind of fits Ian. that mold and, and, uh, and plays kind of the same style that Ian played. So he yep. fits what we're doing. Hard to block. Hard to block. Hard to get off and single block, I should say. If you want to take yeah. a guard and run him up to the second level, he's not going to be single blocked. Correct. And he's so. a guy I, I don't think you're going to get great push on and, and, right. and push back into the lap of the linebacker. Yeah. So uh, And help. helps you in short yardage, which you guys have been good at short, yes. short yardage with the penetration and that type of stuff. Yes. Great. Um, let's move on to a safety right now. Let's talk about Davis Oliver Goodwin out of St. Augustine High School. In Louisiana, coach. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah, he they, know Lafayette was in Easton, or did he think it was in Louisiana when you first <laughs> talked to Davis Oliver? What'd you like about him? You know what? So uh, Davis played a lot of corner uh, in high school. Yep. Um, we're going to move him, transition him into safety again. A six-three okay. kid with six, great three. length, uh, runs extremely well. Again, another physical kid. But again, when you're talking about safety, you still want guys that can cover, and he is a guy that can cover, and yeah. he's also Long. a guy who can break on the ball. Uh, from the back end. So, yep. uh, you know, you, you watch when he can, you know, here he's going to speed turn. and This was uh, an incredible play. Yeah. I mean, how you teach this in high school to get there and see the wheel route and speed turn back out? Yeah. and Great so, play. Yeah, it is a great play. And like I said, another just great kid, comes from a great family. Uh, mom's a, a college counselor in, in one of the high schools. And yep. So probably knew a little bit about Lafayette. Originally from upstate New York oh, okay uh, ended up down in, in New Orleans and uh, you know so had a little bit of an understanding of, of what Lafayette was so yep. uh, we just had him here on a visit and uh, the family loved it we got a little brother Malcolm who enjoyed the visit so okay. he had to sign off on it <laughs> but uh, yeah Good Davis, stuff. Davis is uh, is an incredible incredible get for us yeah. and uh, we think he's gonna be a really really good football player. first thing I noticed about him is just the length and the size yeah. Okay, and you're going to move him to safety where he's going to be more comfortable because now he can really use his speed. He can play in the slot. He can play a tight end. He's got the length and the size to do that. Um, he changes direction really well because you always worry about a big kid that's six foot three. Can he change direction? Correct. You know, he reminds me, and I'm a Jet fan, a little sauce gardener in him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got a little bit of sauce with the length and the speed and the ability to tackle. I tell you what, he's, he's, he's a good get yeah. and he's a big kid. Yeah, it could be a guy who... Uh, you know, could help us in our nickel and dime packages, yeah. you know, and, and, exactly. uh, and even some of the blitzes that we're running out of those. Yeah. So. And we haven't covered it a whole lot. We haven't talked a lot about special teams, but here's a kid that's going to be on special yeah. teams for you. He's going to be on the bus. Remember, your first two games away, you yep. have Sacred Heart away, then you go down to Duke. Yep. Okay? So you're going to have kids maybe that need to get on that bus. And I've we already watched 16, 17 kids, and there's five or six of those that are going to be on that bus. Yep. You know what I mean? They're, Ethan Webber are going to be on that bus probably. This kid right here is going to be on that bus running down the field. Kaba, those are kids that you're going to need in special teams. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, and again, that's one of the areas that we talked about improving, yep. uh, becoming better, because that's what's going to help you win games. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, our, our kick game in terms of coverage was good. Right. You know, but, uh, you know, we still have to get better and improve nationally yeah. in the rankings. Yeah. And, and the other part of that reverse side is the first offensive play is your kickoff and your punt return. Yes. Got, we were always good when we yep. did punt return here with you and me. We got to find a way to make that our first offensive play so that we're gaining yardage and we're not not catching the ball or we're letting it hit the ground or we're in a position where we're not advancing. It's fair catch after fair catch. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, uh, and that's going to be a big part of the offseason and good. making sure that we get guys back there that can, can help us with that. Yeah. Well, you were the special teams coordinator here. I was a special teams yeah. coordinator here earlier. It's important that uh, those that there's such emphasis, and I know you're a coach that puts a lot of emphasis on special. Yeah, players. and it's what wins games. I mean, field position, yeah. you know, is, is critical. You know, yeah. especially not putting your defense in bad situations and yeah. and uh, getting short fields for your offense in the end. So it wins uh, games for you, but we've also seen how it can really affect games from the loss column as well. Yeah, and it affected yeah. us this year. You know, yeah, I mean, you, uh, you know, we, you know, you look at Holy Cross. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. the number six team in the country. Right. You know, if we can probably kick a field goal or two from some distance, yeah. you know, we got a chance to win those games. That's and, right. Uh, you know, so, and the uh, Temple game, too. You're right there, seven yeah. points in the fourth yeah. quarter. You get three punts blocked, and you're yeah. still seven points yeah. in the fourth yeah. quarter. You know? you're, you're absolutely you right. you got a punt yeah. return called back at Penn. You know, you lose the game 12-0. I mean, all those games, you flip them one way or another, 
you know, you look at like the Vikings this year. They won 10 one-score games. Yep. If we just win half of those, we're a winning season right yeah. here. But but that's the promising thing is that you're one step away. Yeah, special teams will play a big part in that. Yeah, absolutely. And all these kids are going to be affected as well. Let's talk about Darson Genti or Genti. Genti, right? Genti yep. okay. Darcy. Another an outside linebacker, 6'4", 200 pounds. Watch this interception. He went to Wyoming Sen for a year, a little prep year. He did. Uh, he was a kid that we found at the end of last year in our travels because we, we didn't have a lot of time here recruiting. Uh, you know, he's from Hillside, New wow. Jersey. Um, and he was committed to go to St. Thomas out in Minnesota. And we talked to him about doing a PG year and coming okay. here. And, you know, he bought into that Look idea. Yeah, he's got great length. He's a physical kid. Again, he's he loves football. I mean, he just, you know, <laughs> he's just one of those kids who uh, lives and, and breathes it and had a great year up at SEM this year. Yep. Uh, and he was a great high school player. So he's got an extra little bit of an advantage having that extra year to develop in terms of size yeah. and speed and everything. Which and he gets because we don't get that here at Lafayette. So he gets that PG, that red shirt type of year. I love that he shows interceptions because you and I are big on that. First, yeah. All state first team, 10 picks, two forced fumbles. Yeah. I mean, and, and getting that extra year is huge. He's going to step in here and compete. Yeah, because he's, he's yeah he will because he's while he's coming in as a freshman, he's not freshman yep. age. So, uh, and again, he's been a guy who has been just following the recruiting and trying to help us, and he's always putting out right. there to the other recruits, hey, come home, you know. So, uh, we're glad that he's going to be home with and us. And you're looking at playing him at the outside linebacker spot or safety, or where are you looking to play him right uh, now? He'll play our band. He'll be our outside linebacker. Outside so, linebacker yeah. spot. So, uh, okay. yeah, adds length and physicalness. And really, you know, when you look, I mean, obviously we're grateful that Billy Schaefer's coming back. He's a great player. Right. Uh, you know, but once this year's over, we have a bunch of seniors that back up Billy. Right. The, the depth there will be, you know, be critical right. To, right. To, to bring him along so that he can fill that well, role. He can learn from Billy, who's one of the best in the league. No doubt. You know, he about learns it. a little bit of Billy's knowledge about football <laughs> and where to be on the field. He's going to be ahead of the game. And yeah. uh, I just look at a kid like that and I say, don't get too big like a Jair Stevens where you end up with your hand in the dirt, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, he uh, at 208 pounds coming in here and six foot four. He, he I don't know if he's done growing yet. He might not be. <laughs> and he could very well grow into something different, you know. So yep. it's always better to move guys forward than the yep. other way. And another special teams kid that is going to be competing yes. for special teams time as well. So yes. we love Darson. We love uh, the way he uh, um, can play on the field. And I love the fact that he shows all his interceptions. That's what I'm about. Takeaways. Um, again, got to replace Malik. Possibly got to replace Jair. Got to get some edge rushers here. Let's talk about a defensive end at a North Shore High School, North Shore, Texas. Jalen Joseph. Love Jalen. Six foot two, 240 pounds. Edge, speed, dip, rip, runs the hump. Love this kid. Yeah, we love him. <laughs> uh, he's going to be a great one, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, he was a kid who was an all-district an all kid, all-region kid out of Houston yeah. area. And... Uh, you know, they went to the state finals the last two years oh, God, and, and played some of the best football in Texas. Yeah. And uh, again, you talk about speed and agility and the ability to get off and, and, and get after the quarterback. He's that kind of guy. And, and we're just, you know, he, he was just up here this past weekend and, uh, and loved it and uh, committed, you know. And he had some great offers, you know, from yeah. Grambling State and, uh, you know, UT Permian Basin. And, wow. And but to, to get the idea of getting, you know, an Ivy League type degree, Patriot League type degree yep. uh, was really attractive to him. And uh, so he's he's going to be a great one. You know, we're we're expecting big things out Man. of him. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Gosh, so you can't look at this kid, but go, can we put a 99 on him right now? Right. I mean, he does. He reminds you a little bit of Malik the way he runs in space. I mean, he he, he, he changes direction really well. He does. And, you know, and I think, you know, one of the things uh, we were all excited when when we got the picture, when Coach Saint was in the school with him, yeah. we got the picture and he wasn't, you know, a 5'10 kid to come oh, in that yeah. way. But he's 6'2 and he's 240 and he, wow. look, he looks like Malik and he can get after it. You get excited. And your heartbeat yeah. starts going up. And yeah. You just want a chance at a kid to see the school. You want to get him here and say, okay, let Lafayette sell itself. And it did that for him. Yeah, it did. And, and he was a kid who was a little bit nervous, I think, about, uh, is it too far? Right. And we got him on the plane and he got here. Yeah. He goes, eh, I still forget that I'm in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Because it was only three hours. He drove nine hours, I think, to see there one of go. the other schools. So. Oh, he drove nine yeah. hours. Well, there you yeah. go. That's a selling point as though. Yeah. Tremendous. Just tremendous. Again, out of Texas. 
Andrew obviously did a great job with him. Andrew, you said, is a Texas. Does te Texas? He does. Saint was okay. actually the one Saint that found him. Went. <laughs> they went and found him. I know why Saint went. went. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, That's great. But yeah, great great football player, great yeah. person. And, uh, just insane. Just insane get off between him and Crawley. Boom, guys that can get off the yeah. football. And that's where you win games in the fourth quarter with a four-point lead in the Patriot League. Rush the passer, just like we did at Lehigh. Yes, right? 100%. And he'll, he'll be that guy that can get after yep. the quarterback. I mean, the secondary's got to be good in the fourth quarter, and, but you got to be able to rush the passer. Other D-linemen. Okay, let's talk about a kid out of Bridgeton, New Jersey, St. Joseph's Academy. Demarion McCoy, 6'3", 265 pounds. Going to major, uh, major in economics, two-time all-conference first team, all-west first team selection, 80 tackles. Tell me about Mr. McCoy here. Yeah, he's a... <laughs> He's a really good athlete for, for a big man. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we're going to be playing him inside. Uh, but when you watch his high school tape, I mean, he, he stood up, he played some linebacker. And when you're yep. that big and have that kind of athleticism, obviously to be a you know, defensive tackle uh, is going to be easy for him. And, wow. you know, he had, uh, you know, 30 tackles for loss, uh, <laughs> just really got after the quarterback. And, again, uh, just a tremendous, tremendous kid. We really, really like him as a, as a player, but even more importantly, he's just yep. a great person and, and will fit, uh, you know, our program. So, uh, you know, we think we got a good one, one of the better ones in South Jersey. Oh, yeah, nasty at the point of attack, I wrote. Good lateral movement. I, I love he plays low, too. Plays low, I like that. And yeah, he's he got can, good hips and explosion from the hip area. Yeah, he can bend and run for a big guy yep. and, and change direction, which is really important. Yep. And, uh, you know, had a great high school career. You know, he, he commuted, you know, 45 minutes a day to get to St. Joe's oh, Hamilton. Mark. That's dedication uh, right there. Yeah, to get a better education and, and as well as to play for a good football program. So yeah. uh, it'll be easy for him to roll out of bed and just get to class here. <laughs> exactly. And a defensive lineman that start and plays, a lot of his film is him on his feet. Yes. So, I mean, that's a plus right there. He's not always got his hand in the dirt. He's on his feet. He can move. He's got a diagnose and he runs well and he's explosive. I tell you what, between him and Crawley, there's, I mean, there's two... Guy, I don't know if he's a five or a three, but he's a kid that's going to play and maybe a kid on special teams as well that can get on the field because of his athletic ability. Yeah, absolutely. Coach Wilkins yeah. is excited to get him right here. So <laughs> exactly. Start coaching him today. Yep. Okay, let's go. Another defensive end. So we, we got a feel here for what we're going after. Guys that can yep. rush the passer, guys that can get off of blocks. Let's talk about Darian Riley. Again, out of Houston, Texas, 6'5", 227, Summer Creek High School. Tell me about this guy, Darian. Looks like a good one. Yeah, he's uh, he's long, you know, being you know six four, six five, and and can run with great length. Uh, he's got great pass rush moves, and you know the funny thing is, is uh, you know Darian, uh, Summer Creek, and North Shore are right next to each other and play each okay. other. So uh, to get you know him wow. and Jalen Joseph, uh, they were at the, they were at a basketball game the other night, yeah. and ran, and we we introduced himself to each to. Uh, to each other because they didn't know each other. They didn't know. And they happened to be at the same game because North They're Shore was coming to be part. Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah, but Darian is uh, just a tremendous get. I mean, again, he's got uh, that length where he can get after yeah. the quarterback, uh, but he can also run down a line. He can he can surf and, and play yep. his own read, and uh, so we're really excited about him. Uh, you know, and he'll be he'll be more on the. Uh, you know, on the side of where, uh, you know, we're going to try mm -hmm. and get him freed up and moving around a little bit too and put, yeah. move him different places on the defensive line. Right. I like to see kids that can play on their feet because, you know, when you recruit kids, you also have to recruit in the league. You got to see who you're playing. And when you're playing a Colgate who doesn't dabble in the zone read, who runs the zone read, and then Lehigh throws it in, obviously, and for all these teams run it. And obviously up in Holy yeah. Cross, you got to deal with Sluka. You got a guy, guys, that can play in space and, like you said, you know, do the surf down the line of scrimmage. These type of kids are the kids that can do that. Yeah, yeah. The athleticism is just incredible and the ability to change direction. You just can't replace yeah. it. And, again, a guy who has that kind of length where he can lock out and, right. uh, and get separation quick is, yeah. is important. And that's the length when they get the long arms and stuff yep. like that. And uh, but that's funny how the kids at the same basketball game they end up coming together. Yeah, Something come tells down. me they might end up being some roommates earlier. They could take a look at that yeah. if they get along, even though they're from rival high schools. Okay, let's move on to an area which just baffled me this year: the kicking game. Okay, a kicker. We got Jack Simonetta. Am I saying Jack that right? Simonetta? Yeah. Simonetta on West Orange in in Gotha. I think it's Gotha, Florida. Six foot one sixty five. We need a kicker coach. Tell me what you liked about Jack. So, uh, you know, Jack came here in the summer and, uh, and, and kicked the ball for us. I mean, he tried out okay. for us here and was putting the ball on top of uh, Burger Varsity House. So it was going over <laughs> okay. the net. 
So I he's like got that. incredible leg strength. Um, you know, when you talk about getting the ball to the back of the end zone on kickoffs, he's got that kind of power so that nice. uh, we can avoid kickoff coverage sometimes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you'll see him here kicking off and, and his hang yeah. times were incredible. And, you know, Jack's great grandfather came from yep. Italy to Easton. I got it written down yeah, right here. And uh, so it's kind of ironic he's ending up here with us. But, um, you know, when we talk about uh, field goals and percentages, I think 80 percent of his kicks were touchbacks this year. Wow. And then when you talk about his distance, <clears throat> uh, you know, he made a 55 yard field goal there. I think you see it. My and, goodness. Uh, you know, so he, he, he has some length for us to yeah. make some of those long field goals that were hurting us last and year. And he's still 18 years old. He's going to grow, going to get stronger. You know, 55 could be 60 by the time he's done. But look at this, 66-yard, 3.7 hang time. And when you make a team go 75 yards yep. instead of 65 or 60 or 50 yards, that's a huge difference. I mean, just touchback after touchback. And if you look in the league and around the country, the teams that had a lot of the touchbacks had the, some of the best defensive stats in the country. Yeah. Yeah, and right. that's what you want to do. You want to make people drive right. the field because yep. they're not going to get to the end zone quick. Yep, and it's funny. His great, you said I have written down here. His great-grandfather immigrated from Italy to Easton, PA. So there's a little bit of a connection as well. So we like Jack out of, out of Florida. Got a strong leg, good trajectory. Um, let's talk about a linebacker that I could not stop watching, a safety slash outside linebacker in Robert Stevens. Robert Stevens is out of DeMatha. Had a lot of things going on for him. 6'1", 208 pounds. This kid, in my opinion, is a difference maker. He's a big kid. Look at, I mean, that was over and over and over. He can just deliver the wood from the secondary. I love this kid. Yeah, uh, so we're, we're going to move him down and put him in the box because he's yeah. so violent. Oh. Uh, you know, he plays great coming forward. So yep. uh, we're going to start him at linebacker. When you see him in person in his frame, yeah. you know, he has the abil ability to be a 230, 235-pound wow. linebacker that can run, strike. Man. Uh, and he comes from a great program. Just, yep. Math and uh, the, you know, WCAC. And if we can keep getting players out of there like Jamar Curtis, yeah. you know, uh, like him, I mean, uh, great little pipeline. Yeah, we're going to yep. be better for it. And uh, but we again, we feel that he he you said it. I mean, he's he's a difference maker type guy. Yep. yep. And uh, man, just plays with explosion. He plays and honestly plays with no fear, too. I have written down just plays the game, just throws his body around. Um, He'll be one of those guys you talk about getting on the bus. Oh, yeah, right know? there. Yeah. On the bus next year, game one, Sacred Heart Duke. Yep. I got it written down. I mean, the kid's going to be on the bus, and that's got to be exciting for him. When they see your schedule, or, hey, we're playing Sacred Heart, we're playing Duke at Duke, and I'm going to be on the bus. I mean, I have it written down right there. I mean, and like you said, it plays well in space and plays well inside the box. He's going to be a special teams beast, and you don't know how big some of these kids are going to get. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's a find, you know, yeah. and, uh, yep. you know, Coach Johnson did a great job with him, and yep. uh, you know, Coach Johnson. It's a good DC football guy. man, Dematha, Hyattsville. Wow, yeah. not so, just a basketball school. No, it's a football school. <laughs> yes, it is. So clearly, hoping we can get more guys out of that program. As Absolutely. Well. Okay, let's talk about another defensive lineman here, Michael Vaughn, out of St. Stephen's and St. Agnes, Clinton, Maryland. Again, Wyoming, Seb, right? Yep. PG kid, 6'5", 245. Uh, ec economics major. I love his explosion. Good great power as well. Yeah, again, another guy with great length. Yeah, you can see that, that what we were going after were guys that had length and can run. Yep. Uh, he's up to 260 already. Uh, did a great job at Sam. Again, another guy who, right, you get you get a PG year really is like that red shirt year. Right. So he's developed. He's gotten bigger, stronger. We really liked him a year ago. And what we were trying to do with the with the post grads yeah. really is, is they were guys that we would have taken last year had we had the money. Uh, so they were still scholarship kids that uh, we put there that we could bring this year. So right, right. Uh, just, uh, you know, Michael's a great kid, again, coming from, uh, you know, great school, really intelligent, yep. great football IQ, and it's really important to him. So I like D. Lyman that wears single digits too, number six, <laughs> right? Yeah. He's number six. I want to know D. Lyman is nine on this team. I like D. Lyman like that because they think they're athletic and they think they're DBs, but they're yeah. playing in a bigger body. So his explosion and power, you're going to have him – you know, fighting over number 99 with the other guy. Yeah. <laughs> They're both gonna well, and, and when you look at what we lost, I mean, obviously with Damon Washington, Malik, right. Jair leaving, yep. uh, you know, Ian Grayson, we lost four really good ones. So yeah. it's really important that we tried to bring in a great group, and, and mm -hmm. we did. And these guys are all going to have to help us pretty quickly. Yep. And the fact that he's got the extra year, he's a PG kid as well. Uh, love Michael, love what he does. Um, okay, let's talk about another kicker. 
Yeah. So a little competition in the room. Darren Wu out of Shawnee High School in Medford, New Jersey. Going to be a psychology major, a two-time All Burlington County selection. He's a black belt in, in karate. 16th in his graduating class. All these notes I have on. What did you like about Darren and his ability to kick the football? Well, he's a really good kicker. He's a really good punter as well. Uh, probably the most impressive thing that, that we really thought and we were all intrigued is, you know, he was a captain of his football team. And sometimes okay. you know, kickers get overlooked as leaders. Sure. And, uh, but again, I think it's a credit to his, his commitment to his team, uh, his ability, which is he's got a really high ceiling. And, and we needed to create competition in that room yes. just because of what we lacked a year ago. Uh, and hopefully it pushes the guys we have in our program too. Right, right now, but, uh, sure. But, you know, he was, he was very accurate. And like I said, just a really strong leg. And, uh, you know, he was one of the best in South Jersey and New Jersey yeah. as a whole. Right. Good trajectory on his kicks. Got good power. I always look for pop at the point of attack when, he, when, he's, when he's kicking the football. Does he get the ball up and over? Um, and has he got good, good snap in his leg right there? And he yeah. has all those. Him and Jack both have that, and you're going to create that good competition. So another good get right there. Uh, um, I don't like to talk about kickers too much, Coach. Just make a kick, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, Just get in the game and make a kick, but you got, you're a football player as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> but we're also looking for him not to make kicks, but I think with yeah. him, I think you know his, his ability to punt is also going to separate him a there little bit. Yep. So uh, giving us uh, a chance to yeah. – I mean, he drives the ball into the air, and he's got great hang, yeah. and it's going to help our coverage. Got to get even. ways to create long fields, yeah. pin people in, that backward kick, you drop it inside the 10-yard line, get people to fair catch the football. That's all part of the game. It goes overlooked a lot, you know, but special teams are absolutely huge. So, uh, again, just a, a fantastic day here on campus in the Bar uh, Burger Varsity Football House. Coach, thanks for joining us for a couple minutes. It's been absolutely wonderful. It's my favorite day of the year, and I'm sure you're excited. Maybe you want to get a little sleep, huh? <laughs> yeah, nah, we, we still got a few more to, to lock up, you know, so yep. there's still some kids in this class that we're going to bring in. And, uh, again, uh, we're really excited, though, that, that we had the opportunity to recruit great kids sure. that are going to improve our program and represent us well on campus. So this, yeah. is, this is outstanding. So you got to find good citizens. you got to find good students, obviously, that are going to graduate. Um, and the kids that you have in this locker room, we're in this locker room right now. I'm looking around at some of the names. You had some good people. And you got, I think, out of that senior class, exactly what you talked about when you got the job is that these kids want to win now, and we want to give them the opportunity to do that. And I thought the senior class this past year really were committed for, to that for you. Yeah, no doubt. And, and we're, we're really fortunate because we're going to get a couple of those guys back. Yep. I mean, we're yep. going to get, uh, you know, Marco Levis is coming back. Oh, boy. Uh, John Olmstead's coming back. Yeah. Billy Schaefer's coming back. Yeah. Bomasi Mate is coming back. Wow. And, you know, and you're talking about guys, uh, you know, I think they've seen what, what Malik had the opportunity to do, which was come back, be the defensive player of the year yep. in a conference. And now he's getting a ton of looks in the NFL. Yep. And those guys have that kind of ability, which I think, coming back here is really going to benefit them yeah. uh, in their pursuit of, you know, getting something bigger down the road. I would have loved to have an extra up. year back then, but, <laughs> you know, I don't know if my body would have held up or I don't know if your body would have <laughs> no. held up either, but it's been a great day inside the uh, Burger Varsity Football House here. Uh, thank you so much to John Troxel, the head football coach here at Lafayette, and his staff have done a tremendous job scouring the entire nation to bring in over 25 kids, and there's even more to come. Um, but we're excited. So thanks again for joining us for this past hour. We hope you take a good, hard look at these kids. You can go on and watch each and every one of them and check out it on HUDL, or Huddle. You can check it out on GoLeopards.com and the Lafayette Sports Network. Thanks again for joining us. This has been Signing Day Central.